here, and uh, we'll be off to the races. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line as he does every week on the show, it is Mike Reyes from Cinema Blend to talk about this week's movies, news, entertainment, and everything in between. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Oh, not much. How about you? Ah, you know, another week of, you know, breathing oxygen and, uh, you know, doing the thing and the work and the, you know. And the behind, and yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got a nice big trench dug out in front of my front yard. We were talking about the joys of home ownership this week, and uh, Mike, uh, AC problems, uh, and we don't need to go into the whole story because there's a lot, but AC problems, uh, water heater problems, and now a trench in your front yard. Yeah, AC problems, water heater problem. Well, the water heater was still working, but it was aged, and we knew it was going to go any, at any point. Yeah. So we just asked them to quote us for it anyway, just throw it in, you know, penny for a pound. And then we found out the water line was corroding, so we had to get the water line co corrected. <laughs> a huge trench had to be dug in our front yard that's still now sitting open because we still, we're waiting for inspection. Now so you, it's a process. Now you need to get a little uh, X-Wing and like fly it through the trench and make a little TikTok video. I was kind of thinking that same thing, but I'd need to have like the patience and the skill to do that. And I think it's the patience that really gets me. I uh, I sent a video to you last week on TikTok. I sent a lot of videos to you on TikTok last week. Did you uh, get that thing I sent you? <laughs> well, there's one where a guy took a drone and he put the Millennium Falcon on the front of it to make it look like it was flying. Ooh. It, it's really cool. But uh, the other ones, real quick, before we dive into the movies, uh, a couple of really cool TikTok trends going around right now is one guy asks uh, everybody what their favorite random S Simpsons moment is that's stuck in your head forever. Oh, I love that one. And uh, the other one is the Steve Zahn, uh, what is it, Bad Ape from uh, Bad Ape. the no, 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 no. And they're putting it in different situations. <laughs> it's well, they're not all suitable for radio. They have been wonderful things to discuss. No, oh, I will they... say that the, the, the easiest, like most benign one we could throw on the radio is like Abraham Lincoln's ba uh, bodyguard after coming back from his pee break. Yeah, exactly. So uh, very funny stuff out there. All right, let's dive into the world of movies. Uh, Mike Reyes from cinemablend.com. Uh, kind of a uh, uh, interesting week as not a lot of like blockbusters, I don't think, but uh, interesting movies in their own right. Uh, what's the first one we're talking about? So the big movie that I know of that's releasing this week is an indie film called Ezra. Okay. Uh, it's directed by Tony Goldwyn, who some of you might know as the villain from Ghost, but also the voice of Tarzan from Disney's Tarzan. Okay. I'm not even kidding. And he also, he's, uh, he's on Law and Order right now currently. He's the, I think he's the new assistant district attorney after Sam Watterson stepped down. Okay. But it's all about a stand-up comedian played by Bobby Cannaval, who has a son with autism. And they go on a road trip because his agent is looking to book him on Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, interesting. Now, is Jimmy Kimmel a part of this? I don't know. We, you don't really see him in the trailer. Because the thing was, this, this really caught my eye not too long ago watching the trailer. It just looks like a very quiet, dramatic film that actually does have heart to it. And it's, when you're portraying neurotypical people on screen, it's very easy to fall into tropes. Yeah. and into various uh, stereotypes. And this movie doesn't look like it, it falls into that. Based on, I mean, I'm, I'm eager to see the film, but I haven't watched it yet. But just looking at the trailer, there's, there's just such beautiful, sort of sometimes heartbreak, because it's just obviously as a parent of a neurotypical, a neurodivergent, sorry, neurodivergent, neurodivergent child. Uh, being a neurodivergent person myself with ADHD, I it, it kind of hits me because I know my parents obviously went through it resonates. And, yeah, it definitely resonates. And I'm very much eager to see that because I think we need more movies like that, especially in the middle of the summer. Being confident enough to release a film like this at this point in the box office calendar is fantastic. But also, I don't think it should be about confidence. It should be about counter-programming people still want to go see movies like this and yeah. you can't just, it's not always the best fit to send it to streaming. Yeah. You want to go see Furiosa. You want to go see bad boys in a couple of weeks, but there's still room for personal stuff like this. And I'm very interested to see how Kevin Costner's horizon and American saga does in theaters because the dude put up some of his own money and allegedly his marriage uh, may have ended because of his dedication to this, this project. Oh, can you imagine? Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. allegedly. I'm not, some people seem to think that his finances, 
his financial commitment to it might have been a, a straining point. Okay. But I don't know that for sure. All I know is that it looks boss. And yeah. But oh. going back to Ezra, I'm very I, I am very excited to to watch this because I just and I, I will go to the movies for anything I'm interested in. That's just me. Yeah. And that's that oh that leads into something we actually want to talk about this week. But I'll hold off on that for then. I'll okay. just say uh, Ezra I believe is in wide release or at the very least it's in like it might be like a lower the lower end of wide almost to limited no no it's pretty wide because i've got a couple yeah we've got it here a couple in, theaters uh, by me. we've got it here in the metro the tip i would give people when they want to seek out movies like this or even when uh when the mummy re-release came around the bigger theaters like your 24 18 screeners mm-hmm. they're more likely to have these movies okay like if you just got a five or a ten they're le- they're they're probably less likely to have it just because space is a premium. And then you, of course you're going to have commitments to bigger films that are going to need certain auditoriums and also just play in the market. Yeah. But when you get like a 24, even I want to say it might've been a 13 screener or a 10 screener when we saw the mummy, it was like a mall theater and they got it just in the nick of time. Sometimes that stuff makes its way to smaller theaters like that. Okay. But yeah. There you have it. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now as we talk about Ezra. Uh, what are the other movies coming out this weekend? It's an anime movie that we don't know much about. Fair to say? Uh, yeah, Haikyuu, The Dumpster Battle. And I'm going to look that up very quickly because I'd like to at least give a synopsis. Uh, it's a dumpster battle. Hinata what joined... else do you need to know? <laughs> oh, it looks like it's a volleyball It's a volleyball movie. <laughs> Shoyu Hinata joins Kabusuno High School's volleyball team to emulate his idol, The Little Giant. But he has to team up with Tobio Kagemayama, his <laughs> former rival. Oh, okay. A new synopsis for non-anime folk that may draw them into this, because this is how, uh, other than me being interested in anime and wanting to see this, there's another angle I thought of here. Okay. What if Maverick and Iceman had to team up for the volleyball game? Oh, can you imagine? There you go. Yeah, the, the world of anime is one of those ones where it is... Like, if you're into it and have your flavor of it, you're definitely into it. It's just, it's oh, such that, a... that's it right there. It's such a wide, wide range. I mean, the easy one for people to kind of grab onto is probably Dragon Ball, which uh, has been around for years and years and years and has been in, you know, tons of different series, tons of different, uh, you know, movies and whatnot. That's probably the easiest one to digest. But, man, you get into some of this stuff, and it is wild to say the least. And Dragon Ball itself was also having some pretty solid release in li- solid success in limited release when they released that uh I think it was Dragon Ball Broly, I forget the Broly. name of the film. Um yeah, yeah it Broly. actually just uh came out on and I don't know if it just came out but it was featured on on Hulu and I started uh making my way through it. And real quick for all of you Dragon Ball fans out there, if you've never seen uh Team 4 Stars edition of Dragon Ball on YouTube, go check it out. It'll be one of the funniest things you've ever seen. I'll tell you this right now to your face. It is amazing. What was it again? Dragon Ball Team Four Star. Just search it. Yeah. <laughs> so what these guys did, they took all of the Dragon Ball episodes, like starting with uh, Dragon Ball Z. They made it into like little 10, 10 minute clips and they revoiced all the characters. It is more fun to watch than the actual anime for me. It is... There was a part, and I remember the first time I was watching it, I was sitting on the couch, and my son Jace, I, I was watching him, he was kind of doing his thing, and I was just watching it on the phone there, and, like, I was laughing so hard I was crying at it, so... Oh, if, now I have to see this. If you want a, uh, they turned Goku into a complete idiot and a horrible father. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So if you get a chance, watch it. But uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now as we do make our way through the movies. That kind of takes care of what's releasing this week. Uh, Just real quick, something uh, we kind of touched on uh, earlier in this, and and Mike and I had kind of talked about it. Uh, What are the trends going around on social media, whether it's on TikTok or, you know, uh, Instagram or Facebook or, you know, whatever your flavor is? It seems like there's this idea more and more of people in, in what really triggered this last week was Furiosa and its opening uh, is the whole idea. Is it too expensive to go to the movies now in the economy we live in? Is it too expensive? Well, yeah, but that <clears throat> another thing that comes out of that discussion or another maybe this sort of stems out of this other topic I'm about to mention. OK, but a lot of people think, oh, the movies are dead. 
Uh-huh. Like theaters are having a problem. Theaters are dead. People aren't going, you know, what's, what's going on here? That sort of thing. And then out of that comes the question, you know, why are people going to the theaters? Are movies too expensive? And that is a conversation that has been had time for time immemorial. It is something, it is a hot topic that has been up for debate through many different shifts of, of entertainment evolution. I mean, you look at when TV was starting to become a thing, theaters were worried that, oh no, here comes, uh, here comes our death now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if it's on TV, then it's going to be so much easier to, to get it there and not have to go to a theater. And then even when VHS is coming up, it's like, yeah, uh, people are going to be able to rent these on video cassette. Why are they going to go to the box office? There is a quote that I'm going to put out from a fellow journalist and a uh, Twitter friend of mine, Kristen Lopez, huh? at Kristen Lopez 88. She is a journalist who has a specific focus on classic films. She's written for Turner Classic Movies. She's actually written... I believe she's written a book for them. He's writing, she's writing another one. And then she's writing a book on the, the creation of Tales from the Crypt. She's doing an oral history about that. So she is someone that is after my own heart. And I give her much credit for all those things. But the thing that she wrote about the whole Furiosa box office problem. And then she had mentioned in reference to all of this. For me, as a classic film fan, the doomsday about the death of movie theaters has always been present. And then she goes into historical uh, accounts of studios thinking that movie theaters are going to die. What do we do? And then she mentions a whole bunch of different things like roadshow versions of movies. Like, it's a mad, 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 mad world was longer in its roadshow version, shown on like the Cinerama Dome or other big event spaces like that that it was in like a normal and it's normal version you get on on home video now yeah and then 3d and other things like she goes into some really good historical examples of things theaters tried to do to get people to come back and circling back to your initial point i want to ask you do you think as a father of as a, as a family man uh-huh. do you think the movies are too expensive i do and I feel like this is a setup for you to knock me down, but I, I wow. feel, no, it just felt like, uh, you were going to like hit me with some hard fact or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense because I can be a sometimes. Exactly. But, That's what prick that thinks that they're right. It was, it's a trap is basically what went through my mind. No, I mean, when you just, when you add up the whole day. And you go see a movie because now there's, you know, you go to some of these theaters and they got like the playground. So you're paying for that. Uh, so they can play for 10 minutes before, you know, the movie starts. I know uh, a lot of the movie uh, money is made off of snacks and stuff. When I say this, yes, I think it's so too expensive, but I buy it every single time. Because if I'm going to go to the movie, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm not going to half-ass it. Yes, absolutely. But, and I... But if I... But if I was to be completely honest with you and is going to a movie my first option now? No, because I think of the money. Like it has to be a, it has to be a really something we want to see or something we want to do. Like in the past, I feel like there was a little bit more and I wasn't taking another kid, you know, you know, uh, a kid to it. It was me and my buddies going, but it was, it seemed like it was an easier thing to go do. I, I don't know. It just seems like it's gotten harder and more expensive to go. Are you, are you, are you ready for this? Okay, go ahead. Hit me with hit me with your facts where you prove I'm wrong. I'm not I'm not gonna hit you with you're wrong because the whole thing is it's very subjective. And in this economy in particular, that sort of subjectivity is very important to keep in mind because people's budgets are going to be different. And especially you look at how kids' movies are one of the genres that are at this point, kids' movies seem to be a genre that they are easier to make huge returns on. Yeah. But at the same time, they're also the genre that's easier to push to streaming, so to speak. Like you look at Super Mario last year, that was the first movie last year to make a billion dollars. Yeah. And it's because there aren't as many kids movies in theaters because I think studios are, at least the studios that are theatrically inclined are thinking about, oh, Families are going to have to find uh, find the time, find the money, and all this other stuff. They understand that that pain point, and I mean to that point that you could probably explain the whole direct-to-video boom of kids' movies 
to the 80s and 90s because of that. And just straight into the 2000s where you had like a, the, the late 90s to the early aughts had Disney doing a whole bunch of directed video movies. And they probably figured this is a good pipeline for families. You know, we get more yeah. out of families here. And then when streaming came along, it's like, hey, do we want to release Leo in the theaters or do we want to put it on Netflix and make it easy for families to just watch it that weekend, not have to worry about a babysitter, not have to worry about snacks? I, I'll put it like this. It just seems like the cost of it in the past, it didn't seem like there was a big, uh, uh, as big of a, uh, in the back of my mind, thinking about the money aspect. Well, yeah, because you were more carefree and freewheeling. Like you said, you were just going with your buddies. Yeah. You only had to pay for your own ticket. And you probably didn't have to well, worry about balancing so many other expenses. One of us would I mean, always buy just, tickets or somebody would buy the thing. We it, it, we didn't not spend money at the theaters. So, but yeah, well, it's, there you it, go. It's, Someone ponies up for the arcade games. It's it's one of those conversations that you know you kind of pointed out with your uh, your your friend's uh, 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 book and all that and the research she's done. It, this has been going on for a long time. It's going to go on for a long time, and I don't I don't feel like it's one of those things that's ever going to to change drastically. Like I No, uh, I mean we or I should say this, I don't ever think that I will be in the I, I don't think it'll ever change in the way of man, it was so cheap to go to the movies last night. Boy, that was the yeah, cheapest thing I mean, we've done in a long time. You know? I mean I've talked with theatrical exhibitors and uh for other several th different interviews I've done and I talked when I was speaking with one of them for the story about how Godzilla minus one success was a shocker or like just a welcomed surprise. Uh, I, I just mentioned, you know, offhandedly to each of them as a joke. It's like, well, you know, there's a closed 24 screen movie theater over here. If your company wants to build it, uh, buy it, I'll like help you run it. One of the exhibitors, when I said that was like, you're not going to see 24 screeners anymore. It's just, it's an interesting conversation. I, it, like we said, I don't think it's one that we're going to solve right now. I think it's one that we could go back and forth with. We'll see what happens with it. I just, it's interesting that it pops up from time to time. Uh, especially when a movie like Furiosa, where you think it's going to be awesome, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, that didn't go well. Oh, no. Yeah, I, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but meanwhile, Ape is still chugging along in theaters. Godzilla Kong did really well. And it's, you know, it might be just another market shift. Yeah. We are still in the middle of a market shift right now where certain types of movies may not be hitting as well as you once thought. And we may be running the well dry on certain things, but, uh, and I just remembered, I do actually have a movie to talk about this week. Oh, you do what? Uh, in a violent nature. Oh, what was that? So it is an indie horror film, uh, that is being released and it is being sent out in wide release unrated. Oh, this is the first time I can think of, since the aristocrats in 2005, I want to say that a movie has been released unrated. The only difference is the aristocrats was all for language in a violent nature is a very bloody. Well, it, it is a very intense horror film when it gets to the blood and guts. Okay. Basically we are from the, we're following from the viewpoint of the killer and we're following them stalking their victims and eventually killing them. Okay. And there is one I, I get to speak with writer director, Chris Nash, who is behind this. And if it helps you, uh, it helps inform how twisted of a man this is. He is a, a prosthetic special effects, uh, wizard. And I think that's part of why he loves to push the bounds of what a human body can do on screen. Oh, okay. So did we like it? Oh yes. Uh, what if you took, Friday the 13th, follow Jason, no music at all, except for like whatever sound or whatever music his, his victims are listening to in a scene. Okay. And then it's shot as beautifully as like an independent movie, like Terrence Malick or like uh, just beautiful countrysides and, and full daylight in, with some of these kills. Yeah. Like this is, it is an hour and a half. It is short. It is brutal. It is intriguing i dug the hell out of this movie and i got the, the, i got to screen it on my computer and this is another thing about the theater experience which ties in perfectly i want to go see this again with a crowd okay i want because there were stories that came up before my interview where the chicago critics uh, the Sh chicago critics society were doing a screening of the movie and there was audio that was leaked on the social media where you heard them during a scene and I don't know which scene it was where they're like gasping 
and reacting. And then at the end, they're all just applauding. Okay. All right. Then. What was this thing called? In a Violent Nature. And a really funny story. Talking to Chris Nash, I was like, oh, I noticed that your movie was originally called Sleeping Animal because that they said that that was the original title in the script. And I was like, what, ma- what made you decide to change the title? And he's like, well, when we were going to look for investors, one of them just came up to us flat out and was like, that's a horrible title. I shouldn't be called that. And then his producers went to him and was like, well, do you have any other title ideas? He's like, not really. I mean, I guess in a violent nature. And they're like, that's the title. That should have been the title the whole time. That's a great so title. It is because, and we were also talking about when we talked about the, uh, the unratedness of it, I was like, you know what? It, you missed out on some wonderful chances for ratings descriptors because you always have that classic one where it's like scenes of a violent nature. And he's yeah. like, yeah, well, this is kind of a play on that. Cause it's like in a violent nature. And it's also a play on the fact that it's in nature and this guy's being very violent. All right, everybody, so, let's have a let's have a smoke. In a violent nature, dear listeners, find it, see it, and enjoy it. And if you don't find it in the theater, or if you do want to wait for streaming, Shutter's going to have it. Okay, because Shutter, this whole thing with IFC Films, and I don't know if it's IFC Films and Shutter or just Shutter partners with certain people, but Shutter has a great partnership where they'll send a movie to theaters. It'll get like a decent wide release platform and then it'll go to shutter like maybe a month or so after. Okay. And it's just like late night with the devil, which was also spectacular. There's, there's good horror movies coming out here and this one being unrated, I would get in on history while you can folks. Mike Ray is from cinemablend.com on the line with me right now as we talk about this weekend's movies, yesterday's movies and everything in between. Um, diving back into the world of movie news and all that, uh, a couple of cool, I know, uh, it's kind of sucks to just go back to the normal grind when it's like unrated horror movie metal. As f- no. oh, I want to see that. <laughs> no, it's just one of those. It's just, uh, making this, uh, make sense for the people at home. Um, real quick, a couple trailers came out this week and one came out right after we talked last week. Uh, we got trailers for Moana two, the bear season three and Beetlejuice, uh, Beetlejuice. The second one, Beetlejuice 2, yeah. which is Beetlejuice. Oh, Beetlejuice. Here he comes. There you go. So, so um, go Michael Keaton on the show. Do we need another Moana movie? Be such, I like when you don't the place. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So the whole thing with Moana 2, I'm on the fence. There's definitely room for stories. There is absolutely room for more stories with this. Approach that Moana 2 is seeking from what I've read is the whole, there was the whole angle where like her, tr- her, her people were separated from like other tribes by the water, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And now they're starting to reconnect with those people. So that's another reason to go beyond the shores. And it's not just going to be her. Like, I think her family is coming along with her on this journey. And of course, Maui comes back. Uh, uh, I think that's the part I don't want. I don't like Maui. I'm I'm just tired of the rock at this point. That's fair. I as I, much I, as I like the man, I it's burnout. It he's very burnout to me. I just got off of having to watch him do all the which they made a very, very intelligent turn in uh, WWE with him and what how they used him and all that. But I'm just like, God, I don't need another rock movie. Different uh, you know, stories about him on set. That have been kind of coming out and some of the lies he's been telling on or alleged lies he's been telling on social media. I just, I, I don't need any more rock. That's where I'm at. I can kind of see that. I understand that because there's been plenty of people that have burned themselves. Some people think Ryan John, uh, not Ryan Johnson, Ryan Reynolds is another person that sort of like burned themselves out with overexposure. Like I, I get that. There's some people that really do hustle and you know, we're, I'm going to bring it back to one of our uh, commonly cited phrases. How can I miss you if you don't go away? That said, I'm still interested. You've got Alili Croalo coming back as Moana. You've got Dwayne Johnson coming back as Maui. Alan Tudyuk reprises his role as the heroic Hey Hey, which I, I saw a fan theory about Hey Hey the other day. And it was, it was well, uh, it's not a fan theory, but like a, uh, it's just a random meme where someone was like, I want to see one of those animal rehab channels, but hey, hey, gets glasses, his vision is fixed, and then he's thriving, and he doesn't have to worry about knocking into things anymore and not oh being clumsy, and he's just <laughs> doing well. But All right. I'm excited. What The part about this that does give me pause is the fact that Moana 2 was originally supposed to be a Disney Plus series. Okay. And this was at some point they decided to retrofit it into a theatrical sequel. 
And the last time I remember a Disney movie taking a TV show and turning it into a movie sequel was Atlantis Milo's Return. And that was horrible. <laughs> and I still am hurt by the, that decision personally. But I have confidence in this, okay. at least for now. Like the teaser trailer doesn't tell us too much. It was a nice look back. Moana is still one of my favorite recent Disney it's, movies. It's one of my favorite Disney princess movies. It's not, it, it's, for me, it's not a, when I said, and I should have rephrased, can I get Moana 2 with no rock? I know, like I was so, like there was Honestly, a part of me, like they, they didn't show Maui until later in the trailer. And there's this hope. I'm like, oh, they're going to do it without him. They'll have, they'll have some other character in that. And then all of a sudden Maui shows up. I'm like, son of a. Even liking Maui, I wouldn't have minded that. Because it, uh, the, the problem with a character like Maui is they're the side character, that, but they're the supporting character that has the chance to overwhelm the audience and surpass the hero character if you play them too much. Yeah. And I get that. I actually wouldn't have minded a, a Maui-less sequel because Moana needs to stand on her own two feet and can't just be, you know, falling back on Maui. Like, unless she has to demand him, he comes back. Or I and mean, if that's you, the way they do it, that's fine. You have a you have a society with multiple different gods and deities, right? Oh well, yeah. Give me a new one. Why not bring back Tefiti? Yeah. Or like she restores Tefiti, and now Tefiti aids her in her quest. So I don't know. Uh, what uh, that was another thing I loved about Moana. The look just Tefiti like the gives uh, Maui. Having, well, that and just I don't even remember that look, but not having to defeat your villain. Like yeah. she understood Tefiti's grudge. She understood that Maui did wrong, and she fixed that wrong. Yeah. Uh, one of the other trailers we got, like I said, was The Bear Season 3. Kind of TV, more TV, but a very good show. And every time I see The Bear, it makes me uncomfortable. That's part of why I haven't finished Season 2 yet. It's it's one of in those things way. like there are arguments in that show and things that they fight over and that I deal with in radio. I'm not saying it's, you know, the same thing, but it's like it's enough where it makes me uncomfortable and I don't want to watch. Like, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I absolutely I to... think it's going to be awesome. But is there a part of me that's like, you know what? If I just skip it, I'm, I'm okay with this. So two things. I need to get back to it because once we got past, once we got to Fishes, the, the Christmas dinner episode yeah. with all the guest stars, that was the point where it's like, okay, we're taking a little bit of a break from this because that's <laughs> where it got. It's such a good show, but it is so punishing at times and yet so uplifting. It gets but real, real, is, real quick. Ah, real, real, real quick. <laughs> With the new trailers for season three, I'm really worried about where Carmi's going to go. Yeah. Because of the fact that the kitchen for the bear looks like the kitchen he was in with that <laughs> chef played by Joel McHale yeah. in season one, where we see the flashback that made him basically burn out and like spiral and quit. Like, I'm afraid he's going to get, I, I, well, I feel like they're going to bring that up again. But what I'm thinking will probably happen is he'll confront it in some sort of way that it'll be different. Like this is, I wouldn't be surprised if this might be the last season. No one said anything to that point. And I'm sure they really weren't. I don't even know if they expected to get to season three, like who really does in this economy. But I think that if the, season three might be a great way to sort of put some of his own demons to rest. Well, also maybe introducing some new stuff and also new elements. Like I like the fact that he made Sydney partner. Yeah. And that's another thing that's going to be interesting. Is Sydney going to turn into another Carmi? Is she going to flame out? And is he going to become the chef? I love this show. I love this show because it reminds me of character driven movies from the seventies where it's like, this probably would have been an Al Pacino movie in the seventies where like he's an earnest young chef who's like trying to make a buck. He's in a dive, but he used to be big. And just, you could see that it's, it's something that's just very personal in scope, but the pain that it unlocks and the stuff that they go through is what really ma expands the scope. Hmm, interesting. Mike Reyes yeah, from Cinema uh, Blend on the line with me right now, as we talk about some of the other uh, movie trailers uh, real quick, uh, Beetlejuice 2. Do you have any better feelings about this? I'm about it the same. I'm curious but I really hope that it's not newer Tim Burton. I hope this is like a, a return to form for him. And especially when you've got Willem Dafoe, Monica Bellucci, Danny DeVito being hidden in the trailer. You've got <laughs> these, these people like, you've got these wonderful performers I love so much. And then Winona Ryder looks like she's just slipped back in Lydia. I'm sad that we don't get to see 
any of Delia really in this because Catherine O'Hara in the original Beetlejuice is so unhinged. And I'm hoping that I, I want to see what's new for her character. But I, it feels comfortable. I hope it stays comfortable. All right. Mike Reyes from Cinema Blend on the line with me right now. Uh, real quick, I want to wrap up with the Deadpool stuff, if that's cool. Uh, okay. Uh, do you mind if we throw in Travis Kelsey? Because I'm sure you got football fans out there. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to be in a movie. Well, there's a rumor saying that he's being considered for Happy Gilmore, too. Okay. What? And he's like, because uh, he and his brother were out in Hollywood taking meetings. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was even like, ah, these, these dudes are going into acting now. I know how this game is played. <laughs> but that's a, that's a quick Schwarzenegger impression. I can do really good ones if I go slower, but I'm just trying to keep pace for the show. But he's like, you know, I would love to be in that movie in any way possible. And, but it's, it's a rumor right now. But rumors can become true. Rumors can be things. You don't know if it's real or not. And I think they didn't mention this. Because they were talking about who he and his brother have that uh, a podcast together, and they were talking about who he should play. I think he should be the successor to Ben Stiller's evil nursing home orderly. Oh, that'd Especially be good. Especially because, well, first of all, dude's built for it. Second of all, dude is hysterical <laughs> because he was great on SNL. The America, anyone who needs proof. Watch the American Girl sketch with Travis Kelsey on SNL. The way he plays that sketch is so beautiful. But it would also help because in the Happy Gilmore universe, you've got Ben Stiller's orderly character out in Salem, Massachusetts for in the world of Hubie Halloween. So he oh, moved yeah, on yeah, from yeah. that nursing home and he has like, or even if he hasn't moved on, like I just want a scene mocking Star Wars. <laughs> where it's like Ben Stiller shows up in like robes or something. And you've got Travis Kelce kneeling, kneeling in front of him. And he's just like, this man has did a great disturbance to me. His grandmother was a pain in the ass too. I need you to take care of him. Oh, and it's just funny. like Travis Kelce is like the Sith apprentice to Ben Stiller. <laughs> Travis Kelce, hire me. Mike Gray is from Cinema Bl Oh, real quick. What was the uh, Knives Out? Who did they get? Jeremy Renner is now part of the third Knives Out movie, which now is a title, Wake Up Dead Man, from uh, a U2 song. And you've got Jeremy Renner, Glenn Close, uh, Andrew Scott, who was also Inspector with Daniel Craig, uh, Kaylee Spaney from Civil War, uh, Josh O'Connor from Challengers, Harry Washington from Scandal and Django and Chain. And of course, Daniel Craig coming back. Ryan Johnson's writing and directing again. It may be a more serious film this time. And that's what he's been teasing. And it will be out at some point next year. They're looking to start shooting this summer. And this is a cast that over the past couple of days have just been dropping banger casting choices. But I still agree with the theory that they should bring in Timothy Dalton, George Lazenby, and Pierce Brosnan. So that way Daniel Craig can face each of his Bond predecessors that are still living suspect. See, I still want to see him do uh, the 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 girl from the one show. Poker face. Yeah. Oh, I would love to see a poker face crossover, but Glass Onion kind of established that poker face exists in that universe because Benoit Blanc was having that Zoom call with Natasha Leone, Angela Lansbury, and uh, Stephen Sondheim when they were playing Among Us. I know. I just, uh, I, ever since I had that thought, I was like, man, I would love to see them do a uh, crossover. I would just love to see Daniel Craig play like a villain of the week on Poker Face and just have him play something so different. Like, not just a Southern gentleman, because he's done that so much between this and Logan Lucky, but like just cast him as like something so wildly unlike himself that he's done that just the man likes to stretch. Let yeah. him stretch. Uh, Mike Ray is from Cinema Blend on the line with me right now. As we wrap up, I do want to hit the Deadpool thing real quick because I don't think it'll take long. But uh, a lot nah. of as we get closer and closer to that movie coming out, there's a lot more rumors coming out about leaks and you know what's going to happen and all this. The craziest one I've seen, and I just want to bring it up. Not that I think it'll happen or whatever, because you know how many how many times did we you know think oh we heard this about WandaVision or some of these other movies Look, but anyways this coming yeah exactly uh the one i will say uh that i saw i'm like oh my god but <laughs> there's this idea that they may show up at the end of the movie in the end game war and the leak said that deadpool actually gets the infinity gauntlet away and it saves Tony, and that's how the and that's how they bring Tony uh, Stark back to the multiverse. I could not imagine a more divisive 
decision than to do that. And that's <sighs> even with me saying that you could bring Tony Stark back in a limited capacity in the new Vision show, because Vision could have some sort of, well, vision of Tony and like a conversation with him as an AI construct. Well, that's like, the... That's that so that, easy, but bringing him back to the Infinity Gauntlet, that feels so bad. No, that he that That's he saves easy. the Infinity, or he takes the Infinity Gauntlet from Tony oh. before he does the snap. So Tony never dies, is basically what it is. That's still bad. Yeah, like I'm, not, I'm not crazy this, about it either. You're doing a personal sacrifice that that character makes that became an emotional bedrock of that movie. Like, it's not even, it's bad enough that the films after that, they should have taken a break and really thought about what they were doing after that point. Yeah. But then to just undo that is an even more, like, I think that's just more of a bad decision. Well, I, the thing about it is, I mean, they, they already started uh, making you wonder what the uh, uh, video of Tony at the end and whether or not that's an AI version of him. Because they, they brought Tony back, you know, from the dead. I mean, it's not like they haven't done that before, and you know him being an AI. They even did it with uh, Ironheart in that oh, series. Yeah, but I think, well, oh, yeah, I think they just it was a pre-recorded thing. Yeah. I don't think that so, was like anyways, an AI. Um, as we get closer and closer to it, the the spoilers are going to start coming out. I am. They someone did say the post credit scene is going to blow everybody's mind. Well, that's going to be fun. And that's on top of everybody having theories about all these non-Marvel canon folks coming back because Jennifer Garner's been theorized to be coming back as uh, Elektra. Yeah. Uh, some are thinking Wesley Snipes' Blade might come back. I hope not. We've already got... Uh, we've. I hope so. I love Wesley Snipes' Blade. <laughs> like, Blade 1 and Blade 2 Blade? Yeah. Blade Trinity Blade? No. 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 Yeah. But it would also be really funny because then you would ha you would have an opportunity for a joke about Ryan Reynolds being in that movie yeah. too. Could, <laughs> something just as simple as "Do you look familiar? Did I play tennis with you or something like that?" Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I just I I think. And then it's... there's rumors that X twenty three is coming back. Oh, is there? There's rumors that Lauda X twenty three, played by Daphne Keen and Logan, might be coming back for. She's great. Uh, she was, and I would love to see her come back. I'm still waiting for them to to just say, yeah, we've been developing this, developing this in secret, but X-23 gets her own series following up the events of Logan. James Van Gold is directing or, or producing. Yeah, so. All right, then. Well, we'll have to see what happens. When does that come out again? It's not too far away, is it? July 26th, I want to say. Okay, so uh, about two months. Uh, there's also a really funny, uh, yeah, July 26th. And there's also, if there's, there's pirated video of it, there's theatrical policy trailers of Deadpool and Wolverine telling people to silence their phones. Yes. And it's so beautiful to see Hugh Jackman in full F bomb, even though it's censored, full F bomb Wolverine <laughs> mode. Just saying, like, hey, bub, turn off your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Deadpool coming is like, whoa, 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 whoa. And like him trying to calm him down. Yeah, it's it's pretty fantastic. Uh, Mike Reyes from Cinema Blend uh, on the line with me right now. Uh, I think that'll do it for this week, Mike. Um, good luck with the trench in the front of your yard. And uh, we hope you get all of that squared away here soon, okay? I'll try to stay on target. Mike Reyes from Cinema Blend joins me every week. Hey, man, have a good one. Have a pleasant one, everyone. All right, we're back. Uh, this lasted all 30 seconds before uh, I said wrap up, and Mike's like, oh, no. So we hit the record button oh, again. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And it is Deadpool related, so that's kind of funny. What's going on, Mike? So just as B Sox and I were doing our, our best to, you know, say goodbye, have a good day, go be productive, go do things, don't do crime, Ryan Reynolds drops a video on Twitter of the Deadpool popcorn bucket. And they have been promising a, an obscene popcorn bucket for this movie. And it actually matches up to the, some of the concept art that someone, had, well, it's close to some of the concept art someone had put out where basically they had variants of Deadpool and Wolverine's faces, but the mouths are shaped in an O <laughs> to, uh, to, to, um, to convey a certain expectation. Uh, yeah. That's the way I'll put it. And because, you know, I can't say we have, probably can't say those other words on on a, well, on on a radio, podcast but, might be all right. But OK, so I'll just we'll just do the bleep trail. Anyway, it's a bucket, basically, <laughs> like they're mocking the Dune popcorn bucket that everybody was mo saying, oh, this kind of looks like uh, a marital aid here. Oh, and God. That, 
was something that probably happened that just didn't mean it on purpose, this is totally on purpose. It is a, the face of the bucket is Wolverine's face with a gigantic gaping mouth oh, for popcorn. And then when you look at the bucket itself, it is black and it has scrolled in like red crayon designed by Deadpool. <laughs> I think I may have to buy my first popcorn bucket because this is too funny to pass up. Oh, that's wonderful. Mike Reyes from Cinema Blend uh, joins me every week to talk about movies, popcorn, and buckets. Mike, you have yourself a great weekend. Hey, guys. Keep it handy. All right.